Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Dignan and I'm an outcomes and evaluation expert and what I'm going to be talking about here is how we can work with shared outcomes um, with multiple projects and work with them against a common outcomes framework. At the current time, a number of programs in the social and health and environmental and other sectors are working uh, to achieve a similar outcome. So we, so we have a situation where there's a, a shared set of outcomes and a number of programs are working to achieve them. This is happening particularly as people want more what we call joined up solutions and more collaboration between programs and this, getting the synergy that occurs between different programs when we're trying to achieve a common set of outcomes. Uh, the problem though is, is really to make sure that what we're doing is the best mix of projects or programs in order to achieve these outcomes. And typically the way we try and do that at the moment is we, we have meetings, um, collaboration meetings where different people running programs sit down and maybe we have someone's prepared a table which outlines the different programs which are occurring at the moment. Um, but often the programs have different documentation setting out the outcomes they're trying to achieve in the, in the form of objectives um, for the programs and outcomes etc and the task of actually working out whether we have the right mix of programs whether there are any gaps or overlaps in the mix of programs which are trying to achieve these outcomes um, is rather difficult. What I want to talk about here is a, a more visual approach to doing that which is based on developing a visual program logic or we call them in this case outcomes model because they're not just focused on one program but a visual model of all of the steps that we're trying to take in order to achieve higher level outcomes. If we can build a common model to do that, we can then map the different projects that we're using onto that common model and we get a really, really clear picture of the, the best pattern of projects to use in order to achieve the outcomes and where there are overlaps and where there are gaps. I want to turn us now to a DoView outcomes and evaluation software model which looks at this. Now this is a very simple one which I've just done for the purpose of illustrating uh, what we're doing here. And this is in the smoking area, reduced smoking as you can see. And beneath that there are four uh, lower level steps which are thought, in this case, to lead to reduced smoking. One is attitudes and knowledge about smoking, reduced tobacco company advertising, legal restrictions on smoking, and family and peer pressure. Now I want to emphasize that in a normal case the diagram would be much more complicated than this. And uh, if we were working with Induview software, we may have a number of sub pages which set out this diagram, um, which outlined in some detail the common outcomes we're trying to achieve for the program. But just using this illustrative example here, what I've got along the bottom of the diagram are a set of three programs which are being run. One is a media campaign, and one is pamphlets and posters regarding smoking, and one is a school-based education program. Now when I click on one of those, you can see with this little link here, which is the DoView link, which is a, another way within DoView in which you can show a link, not relying just on lines and arrows, but because this DoView link icon has come up, it shows that the media campaign is directed at this particular step in the outcomes model attitudes and knowledge about smoking. If I click on the pamphlets, you can see that also uh, that uh, particular program is directed at changing knowledges and attitudes. And then if I click on school-based smoking education, you can see that it's actually directed at changing knowledge and attitudes, but also over here at family and peer pressure in regard to smoking. Now what I've done then is, is um, look at which um, programs uh, are uh, causing um, this particular step to occur. And in the case of attitudes and knowledge, we can see that it's the result of three programs, media campaigns, school-based smoking education, and pamphlets and posters regarding smoking. What I've done then is just put in brackets within that step the number of programs which are mapping onto that particular step within the model. And I've done that uh, across here for family and peers where we can see there's one program which is directed at this particular step. And you'll note I've also put in the two other boxes uh, for which there are currently no programs a zero 
to show that there aren't any programs targeting that. So if we were using this in a strategic discussion and we had some stakeholders in the room, you can see how very quickly they would be aware of the areas within the logic model at which the current mix of programs are targeted. And obviously we may want to introduce something like this, the Stakeholder Advocacy Coalition, which I've just uh, included now on the page. And we may want to make a link between that and reduced uh, tobacco company advertising if it could result in legislative change to reduce tobacco company advertising or illegal restrictions on smoking. And in that case we would then change the number appearing in those boxes to a one to indicate that in fact now there is a program which does map onto those steps within the model. Now this has been a very very simple um, example of doing this. In fact as I said it would be much more complicated in reality but I've kept it very simple so you can see it on screen. You can see though how this visual approach um, could be quite powerful when working with stakeholders to really generate a strategic conversation about gaps and overlaps uh, in the current mix of projects. Just the final point which I want to make is that it is important the way you build the outcomes models, the program logic models. They need to be world centric, not just program centric, because if they were program centric, there would be a different model about each of these individual programs. I have developed a set of 13 tips for building uh, models which can be used for this purpose and a range of other purposes. And um, I'd suggest that you may want to look at those 13 tips uh, in order to assist in building these models. I hope that this uh, approach to working with shared outcomes in multiple projects is of assistance in your work.